Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're gonna be doing a job that everybody hates to do and can ruin your sprinter. Going to be replacing the injector seals this is a big thing with these t1n sprinters and actually all diesels in general if you don't replace the seals when they start to leak you'll get something called the black death which can be brutal to work on but it's still fixable everything's fixable you just need to be really careful while you're, while you're doing it I actually went ahead and already replaced my first injector it's the one uh, closest to you when you're looking at the engine it went okay. It was really hard to get out. I ended up using a slide hammer and had to use it quite a bit for it to finally wiggle out, but got it out and I'm just gonna start on my second one. This is one that's been leaking. So this is the reason why I started doing the injector seals. I thought might as well do them all, but I think I'm just gonna do them as they start leaking and keep a close eye on them. I didn't actually record any footage of me getting the first injector out because I wanted to do it right and I wanted to do the first one um, not on camera just to make sure I was able to do it and that I should actually make a YouTube video on how to do it and hopefully help you guys uh, change yours. The first thing you want to do when working on injectors is get the engine nice and hot. So take it for a nice long drive, similar to doing the glow plugs, you want it to heat up, you want those aluminum uh, engine parts and the block to expand as much as they can. It'll make it a lot easier uh, taking out the hold down bolt and eventually trying to get that injector out. One of the most common things to look for uh, if an injector is leaking is uh, diesel fuel fumes coming into your cap. So you'll be driving, you'll come to a stoplight, you'll be sitting there and you'll be like, kind of smells like diesel a little bit. That's when you want to pop off your engine cover and take a look to see if there's any buildup of black material, any spatter. I'll show you what mine looks like. There's a little bit of spatter on the one side and that is a telltale sign that you need to go ahead and replace one of your injectors that is leaking, maybe more of them. So once you get your engine cover off, this is what you're going to be looking at. Um, so I've already gone ahead and replaced this first injector, but this one honestly wasn't leaking to start off with. I just thought mine as well, start replacing all of them. And I wanted one that was close to get at. So started with that one, that one went okay, really tough to get out. This is my second injector. You can see the spatter all over the back there. The black death is starting to occur a little bit. Okay, so to disassemble these guys, you need to remove um, this small clip right on top here. This clip just slides out, which you can do with a screwdriver, and then you're gonna pop off these lines that go into the top injector. You're also going to pop off uh, these electrical clamp clamps, which you just pull back like that, press down on the tab, really easy. Simple as that, just pulling straight up, not wiggling side to side too much. You don't want to break that plastic. Next up is getting a 14 millimeter wrench and loosening off these lines here. Okay, so you need to loosen off both nuts on each side. After you've removed that injector line going across, you want to take a little bit of tin foil and just cover up. You cover up those ports with tin foil just to make sure no debris gets in there when you're washing everything down. That guy right there is the hold down bolt. To loosen these hold down bolts, you want to get a little bit of an extension and then a T40. Um, these can get kind of tight against the electrical connector on top so it's better to have an extended one I don't have an extended one so I'm just working with this one of the ways to remove one of these these injectors is to pop the injector if you've done any reading online you get the engine nice and hot bring it back home crack that inject that hold down bolt 
um, two or three turns and then go and start the engine and then that injector might just pop and for me injector number two actually just popped out which I am so thankful for because injector number one was a to get out so I was stoked to see that some people um, crack that hold down bolt a few turns and then they'll actually go for a drive they'll go up hills they'll try to gain that pressure inside the cylinder to pop that injector the next way to get the injector out is to get a slide hammer which I will actually show you um, it's on Amazon the kit I got was like 180 bucks pretty pricey um, and it's just a slide hammer that slides up and down it clamps on to the injector it's really nice it works good depending on how stuck your injector is basically uh, the third and last way to get the injector out is an injector extraction tool it involves actually disassembling the injector from the top and then uh, I don't know what size um, and then you actually screw down into the injector and then you wiggle it out I'm hoping I don't have to use that tool I don't have it uh, I didn't order it yet but it is on Amazon so all right guys, so let's see. Hold down bolt, look at that. Ooh. That is the bracket. So I got the injector right here, just pulled it out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it, but there is the copper washer on the end that we're gonna be replacing. It is absolutely filthy. So I'm really glad I did this and I heated up the engine because that grime's gonna come off a lot easier. All right, so how you clean these is get some tin foil, lay this guy down just like that and then you want to pick up some heavy duty uh, oven cleaner actually and just spray that guy you can see it's steaming because it's so freaking hot I am just gonna let that oven cleaner do its job. Soak in that tin foil. You wanna keep the heat in. That's when the oven cleaner works best. It is always a good idea when you have one of these T1N sprinters to carry uh, some bolts and washers. Go to your dealership and pick these up. They'll know exactly what to give you when you give them your VIN from your van. Don't buy these from your parts store. It's worth going to the dealership. Uh, one of the O-rings I think was like five bucks and one of the bolts was like nine bucks. So for five of each, it was $97, which is kind of expensive for bolts and O-rings, but it's worth it. You want to get good parts when you're doing this job for sure. One of the other things I forgot to mention is to help loosen those injectors, get some penetrating oil. I like to use this PB blaster, whether it works or not. I have no idea, but I soaked them like a day or two in advance before driving it, heating it up and trying to work them loose. So I don't know, maybe it helped a little bit, but maybe it didn't. It's worth a shot anyways. All right, so that's what it looks like after you take the injector out. I went ahead and sprayed some oven cleaner on there. Hopefully that stuff will melt right off and I can clean it up. Look at that, that is black death right there. All right, so I just wanna show you what I've been uh, cleaning inside the injector with. So I have a kit here that I purchased on Amazon and I've just been rolling 
towel, like shop towels around the end and then spraying some oven cleaner on there and then putting them down the cylinder and then twisting them, pulling them back out and then doing it all over again, basically. But I will show you here what is underneath this. So I picked this kit up from Amazon. It was like 35 bucks or something and it came with a whole bunch of different types of brushes. Well, it's getting pretty late last night. Decided to call it a day. Came back uh, this afternoon and I removed um, the cover for the air filter. Let me show you. Uh, so there's a cover that goes across here and it just basically you just um, undo there's a clip here and a clip um, on this side here and you basically just slide the cover off um, it gives you a lot more space to work in above the injectors here so this is how clean I've uh, gotten everything hopefully you can see and shine a light down there um, it's looking pretty good pretty close to being done with it. It's just really challenging. It takes a long time. The most important thing is that that seal where the copper washer sits is clean, super clean. And you wanna make sure there's no damage to it so that washer will seal nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and give it um, a little bit more of a clean. And then I'm gonna go and show you how to install the injector. All right, so this is basically uh, my cleaning setup. You can see I just stuck the rod down inside the cylinder and it's come out uh, dirty. Um, it's basically just that screwdriver. And then I just wrap cloth around there and then take the cloth off just by unrolling it. And there's that little brush. And there I have a new paper towel soaked with some oven cleaner. Stick it down in the hole. Twist it. Bring it up, then boom. And you basically want to do that until it is clean when you pull it out. So I uh, finished cleaning the injector. So this is what it looks like now. Uh, you can see the tip there. This is the anti-seize that I'm using. It's Permatex anti-seize lubricant designed for spark plugs, injectors. Um, it's a high temperature anti-C, so it should work pretty well. All right, so I'm ready to install this injector. I've gotten it as clean as I'm going to. I've put some anti-C lubricant on there, uh, and then I'm gonna smear that around and put a nice even coat, a nice even thin coat all the way around, and then I also have the copper washer on there. One thing about this copper washer is you wanna make sure you put it on the right way, and you'll notice that that is the correct way to put it on. If you put it on the other way, there'll be a slight gap. And also that you don't get any of this anti-seize on the tip of the injector or the copper seal. So if you notice, I went all the way up to about just after that last lip there, just to make sure I didn't get any on the copper seal. Make sure it goes in there. Stay there. <laughs> You'll know it's all the way in because the top of this is about flush with this edge. These two straight across there. It is extremely important not to reuse these hold down bolts. These bolts actually stretch a little bit when you put them in. So it's really important not to reuse them. A new one you'll notice has that yellow wax coating on it. It's also very important not to use any anti-seize or lubricant on this bolt itself because it comes with it from the manufacturer. So you wanna make sure that nothing is obstructing these threads. This is the bracket. So this is the slide hammer and I just wanted to show you guys how it fits on one of these injectors. What you do is you slide this piece down. It hooks in onto the injector there. 
And then what you're gonna do is slide this back and forth. It's pretty tight in here, so for this is a second injector and any of the other ones, you might have to remove some parts, but that's exactly how it fits on there. And to take it off, you just slide it out like that. All right, so slip that guy into place there. Make sure it's in proper seating. Then you want to get your new bolt right in there. The uh, last tool you're going to need is a torque wrench in inch pounds. So it's very important how you tighten down that T40 stretch bolt is torquing it to 62 inch pounds and then another 90 degree turn. So I don't know um, about your torque wrench, but mine, um, if you get one in inch pounds, they're pretty small and they don't click like a normal torque wrench would. So I just hit 62 inch pounds on the torque wrench. So now I'm just gonna do another 90 degrees. Just like that. And then for the reassemble, grab your fuel line, tighten it in there by hand, plug your wiring harnesses back in, and then you want to put your return lines back on there. And don't forget your clips that go on top. I'm gonna go ahead and start up the engine. It's a good idea to cycle the key to the on position and off a couple times to get that fuel pump kicking fuel back in because if you just crank it, it might take a while. Eventually it'll crank over, but you might just be cranking it for a little bit. All right, so I just got the cover back on. Um, that's how you place an injector. If you liked the video, give it a like. If it helped you, subscribe to the channel. We have lots more content like this, the van build. I will see you guys in the next one.